Minecraft once had a crazy update that lasted for only 24 hours. In this update, you could write anything in a book, throw in another portal and completely change its color and what dimension would be inside. There are literally infinite possibilities, so I'm going to be surviving the next 100 days in this version of Hardcore Minecraft. Don't forget to leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and enjoy the video. On day one, I did all the basics of Minecraft by gathering wood, making some tools, and grabbing as much iron as I could. And then... Oh my gosh! <laughs> then after crafting a full set of iron armor, I got myself some food and went to sleep. On day two, I found a lava pool close to spawn and built a nether portal. In the nether, I grabbed some gold to make myself golden boots to stay safe from the piglins. Then I got a whole bunch of ender pearls. On day three, I collected a few materials we would use to craft all the books we'd need in the future. I also stumbled upon a village and figured we should build our base close so we could do villager trading and have quick access to food. I think we'll set up our actual base maybe up here in the forest because I like that color of grass better. Then on day four, I started clearing out some trees to make room for our base. I planned to have a giant hallway with so many portals to all different dimensions we discover. I set up some chests, furnace, and a crafting table and started a small farm so we don't go hungry. I started off day five by stealing from the village as we all do, okay, it's not just me. But my karma came quickly because that night I was harassed by roughly seven trillion spiders. I even tried to big burn the situation and tame a dog mid fight to help me and it literally just sat there until every single one of my tools broke. Then it decided to help me kill the final spider. On day six, I crafted myself some iron tools and headed into a cave to find a lava pool. I built a portal down here and created our first new dimension. I think what we name our first dimension should be pretty obvious. With a new cool red portal, I headed inside. This dimension was insane. Blue and green skies, thousands of floating fossils in the air, elder guardians in the lakes, and shulkers all around. This place was scary and dangerous. After exploring a bit, I saw a bunch of end ships and decided to go and grab an elytra, which would be so OP for the early game like this. And as I was digging to get into the treasure room of the end ship, this happened. It took me long to get out. I decided it wasn't worth the time to try to loot this end ship, so I decided to leave, but this time I wisened up and went to one of the ships that was in the air instead of under the ground, so I wouldn't have to break any blocks. And... No loot. And on top of it all, I almost lost the challenge on day 7. Apparently, in this dimension, even though there's water in here, I can't place down water because it's too hot like the nether. I'm leaving. All I did on day 8 was I hit the mines and found myself some diamonds. This was great because we could actually finally mine obsidian. Still in the mines on day 9, I did gather some obsidian before heading back up to the surface. Then I crafted our first enchanting table and got basic level 1 enchants on our gear. As day 10 came around, I decided it was time to start on the great portal hallway. I cleared up some space for a small stairway down and built our first real portal. One goal we have is to find a dimension full of diamonds. So this dimension we're calling diamonds please. And it gave us a nice blue portal. This could be a good sign. On day 11, we headed into the dimension and no diamonds. But there was something interesting here. Wait. <gasps> Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Yeah, so apparently dragons can naturally spawn in this dimension. So I got out of there as quickly as possible and covered the portal in iron bars. So I never accidentally go in there again. And then I decorated it to be all cute and stuff. Day 12, I gathered a bunch of obsidian and built a new portal. I left this one as just a normal nether portal for now so I could go in and grab some cords for observers, since I wanted to build an automatic chicken farm for easy food and feathers for more book and quills. But after I was nearly done with the farm, I realized I was following a bedrock tutorial and I'm playing on Java and that's why the farm wasn't working so I had to start over. On day 13, I made a quick and easy cow farm for leather and decided to risk it and hope for some netherite in a new dimension. I headed in and all of a sudden, I was hearing this agitating noise of trap doors over and over and over and over again. It never stops. I didn't want to stay in here any longer than I had to, but there were some blocks in here I hadn't seen in our main world yet, so I quickly gathered them before heading home. Back home on day 14, I built another portal with our leftover obsidian and called this one gold, hoping to find some gold for infinite golden apples and piglin trading. But inside the dimension was definitely not gold. In fact, there was hardly anything at all besides a creepy looking ocean. Luckily though, there were a bunch of fossils in a safe spot for me to collect, which let us get a bunch of bone meal so we can stop worrying about food for quite a while. 
On day 15, I built yet another portal, and for this dimension, I just keyboard spammed and hoped for the best. And it actually worked. Oh my god, yes! In this dimension were so many emerald blocks. With our base being right next to a village, this basically meant infinite diamond tools, armor, enchants, food, everything. I had to deal with a horde of silverfish on the way back, but luckily I survived with minimal damage taken. With our new emeralds, I headed straight to the village and trapped three villagers, turning them into a toolsmith, armorer, and weaponsmith. As the days go by and villagers refresh their trades, we'll be able to max them out and get fully set up in diamond armor and with diamond tools. While we wait though, I spent the rest of the day mining more obsidian for portals. I started off day 17 leveling up our villagers before heading back to the base and setting up another portal for more dimension hopping. This time, what I put in the book is probably the best thing of all time. Subscribe. Just like you should right now because this video literally took months to make. Even though the portal ended up being an ugly color, the inside looks insane. A sky island jungle biome with a flashing red sky and purple stone. Though it was infested with a ton of mobs, so I quickly grabbed some blocks to decorate the portal with before heading back home. The next day, I had to sell out again and remind you to like the video if you're enjoying it. It helps the channel out a lot, so I'd really appreciate it. Inside this dimension, it literally crashed my game. So if anything deserves a like, I think this does. Coming back from that, on day 19, it was a pretty chill day and I just gathered some more resources. On day 20, I was back on the grind at leveling up my villagers and we finally unlocked the trades to get ourselves a full set of enchanted diamond armor. I even grabbed some bookshelves from the librarian villager and finally set up an enchanting station. I disenchanted our diamond chest plate and used our 30 levels to enchant it again. We got the perfect diamond chest plate with protection 4 and unbreaking 3. The only thing we need left on it is mending, but we'll worry about that a little later. On day 21, our toolsmith had unlocked a trade for a diamond axe, and with the additional levels we got from trading, I was level 30 again and decided to enchant my diamond pickaxe. At this point, I was out of obsidian and needed it more for portals, so I headed into the caves for a while to mine for some more. And lastly, I finished off the day by upgrading our cow farm. Then on day 22, I headed back down into the caves to mine for some iron and coal. Since we hadn't found a dimension with it yet, we were running kind of low. To end off the day, I thought it would be a good idea to try out a new dimension. I decided to name it after a cool Pokemon, Snorlax. But this was a mistake. The second I got in there, my frame rate started tanking, and of course, my game crashed again. After I relogged, I got out of there and I covered it up with iron bars and vowed to never make a mistake like that again by naming a dimension after a Pokemon. So the next day, I woke up bright and early and got to work right away making another Pokemon themed dimension. This one I named after Pikachu, so it's gonna be good, right? Shocker? No, it wasn't. This might even be worse than the last one. Luckily, it didn't crash my game, but there was explosion particles everywhere. I couldn't see a thing. Not wanting to risk it, I left right away. But last time we made a dimension with just random gibberish in it, it was great. That's where we got all of our emeralds from. So I decided to try that again. I also set up a dimension with happy birthday as the book that we would try another day. The keyboard span dimension was nothing special. It was a good place to get some sand, but other than that, it was pretty standard. There was quite a few mobs in here too, so I quickly gathered some blocks and cacti before heading home. We'd been trying out so many new dimensions lately that I spent day 24 just doing a bit of building and making the portal hallway look a bit nicer. Then on day 25, I gathered a bunch more of obsidian, cleared out some more trees, and built more of the portal hallway. On day 26, I finally headed into the happy birthday dimension that we made a couple days ago. On the inside was a crazy void world full of thousands and thousands of chests. The loot in them was the same loot from a starter chest you can enable when creating a new world, so nothing too special. Off in the distance though, I spotted a giant zombie and some weird small white structure, so I decided to go check it out. Once I got closer, I realized it was just an igloo and those have nothing special in them, so I decided to head home because it was getting really dangerous, especially with the phantoms responding and attacking me and... I'm fine. On day 27, I want to continue the streak of doing keyboard spam dimensions and them being amazing for us. So I tried it once again and our streak was broken. This dimension wasn't necessarily bad, but it didn't have anything good really for us either. So I just gathered a few blocks to decorate the portal with. And went back home. Then I decided to try and farm some views so I'd make a DNF dimension. The second I walked in, it was green and blue and filled with rainbow. So if that doesn't appease all the DNFers and earn me a sub, I don't know what will. The final dimension I decided to try before my day was over was my own. 
I put my name in the book and threw it in the portal and headed inside. This whole dimension is a sky island world with blocks just like the normal world but dead coral instead of stone. Across the way I spotted a shipwreck and decided to bridge over and check it out. Unlike the end ships, this one actually had real loot in it. But the thing that's usually a treasure map was just a blank map, so I left. Day 28 I made a new dimension hoping we'd finally get something good. So obviously I called it dirt. And while inside this dimension didn't have any iron, gold, diamonds, or anything like that, it is definitely one of the coolest dimensions we've seen by far. A crazy purple sky and these floating ice spike biomes. This dimension is definitely in my top 10 for looks. I took a little bit of a break on day 29 and just did a bit of building. Back to dimension hopping on day 30, I started out calling this one 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it was probably the most dangerous dimension we've been to yet. The world was full of gas everywhere. They immediately broke my portal with their fireballs. The entire underground was made entirely out of wool. So if I stayed there for any longer, the gas would burn the entire world. I knew I had to get out of here. Luckily, I was able to escape. I decorated that portal and went into the next, called Life. Cause we're literally living. Inside, I looked down and it was a sea full of lapis blocks. Oh wait, these are literally diamonds. We did it, we found our first dimension full of diamond blocks. This is more diamond blocks than I've seen in my entire life. And even with infinite dimensions, this isn't even the craziest dimension we find, but I'm getting ahead of myself. To end off the day, I decorated the portal with diamond blocks, obviously, cause we're rich now, so we gotta show it. On day 31, I went back to some dimensions we've already been in to gather a few blocks to decorate their portals so we don't get things confused and mixed up. Day 32 I also spent grinding for a few materials, I was getting short on wood and ink sacks for books, and I even crafted myself a diamond shovel with our new diamonds and put a simple enchantment on it. I woke up on day 33 happy and ready to start the day, and then… But I wasn't gonna let that stop me. I quickly gathered everything back into my storage, repaired the floor, and headed it over to our village. I wanted to start bringing the villagers over to our base for easier access, so I placed down some rails, put the librarian in a minecart, and pushed him over. For the next couple days, I wanted to start expanding the portal hallway, so I began carving away at a hill that was in our way, and I added a second floor. After all the building, I saw the most unfortunate thing that could ever happen. The minecart that used to hold our villager, empty. Our villager had been eaten alive by zombies during the night, and I didn't even notice. He will not be forgotten. I spent all of day 37 grinding for more obsidian for as many new portals as possible. While I was recording day 38, I was trying to think of new words for dimensions, and I decided since I tried my own name, I should try some of my friends' names. I decided to go with the names of my friends who have been in some of my videos. The first name I tried was Melano. Inside was basically end islands, but with red mushroom blocks underneath. The cool part though was that the lighting swapped between orange, my favorite color, and pink, her favorite color. When I showed her, she thought that was a sign that we should e-date. Oh my god, it's literally telling us to e-date! <laughs> Moving on. On day 39 was the day I tried out my next friend's dimension, Natrix. I'll just be honest and say that while Natrix dimension looked cool at first with all these cool pink beacons, those disappeared after like 3 seconds and then it was just pretty boring in here. Nothing too special. Sorry Natrix! I was running out of feathers to craft buck and quills for new dimensions cause my automatic chicken farm was just too slow. So at the end of day 40, I caved and just put up a fence and lured some chickens in there for a manual farm. I plan on getting a looting 3 sword later, so this will be more worth my time. Then I created the dimension named after my other friend, Griffin. I put Gantz in the book since that's his username and this dimension sucked. It looked ugly and had this annoying lava extinguishing sound all the time. I stayed just long enough to collect some blocks to decorate the portal and then I got out of there. I blocked off that portal because I never wanted to go in there ever again. I felt bad though that his dimension sucked so bad, so I decided to give him another shot and make another dimension with his real name, Griffin. And honestly, this dimension was even worse. There's constant egg breaking noises and the world is made up of glass panes. One wrong jump and I fall right into the void. I was immediately over it and I left right away. No offense Griffin, but both of your dimensions sucked and I'm never going into them ever again. But on day 42, our bad luck finally ran out. I walked into a new dimension and it looked crazy with so many colors and almost a rainbow looking lighting. But best of all, this dimension had ancient debris and even more diamond blocks. Finally, we can get netherite. 
This dimension also had a huge lava ocean where it's literally raining lava from above. This has to be one of the coolest dimensions we've seen so far, but this still isn't even the craziest dimension we'll see. Obviously, on day 43, I immediately upgrade our diamond armor and pickaxe to netherite. On day 44, I made another portal for a new dimension, and we got another amazing dimension back to back. I didn't think this one seemed special at first, but then I realized, with the entire ground made of quartz, this is essentially infinite XP. I grinded up to level 30 and headed home. Before enchanting though, on day 45, I grinded for a lot more obsidian for more portals. On day 46, I put that obsidian to use and built another portal to another dimension. And this one honestly didn't really have anything cool, kind of broke our streak of getting awesome ones back to back, but it at least had some coal box around, so we wouldn't have to worry about fueling our furnaces for quite a while. On day 47, I realized I still hadn't used those 30 levels I grinded for, so I decided to enchant a diamond shovel and got efficiency 4. Then I spent the next few days digging up dirt and clearing land and building the third and final floor to the portal hallway. Once this is done being built, it literally looks insane, but we're not there quite yet. To end off day 50, which is officially the halfway mark to our challenge, I figured it was about time we tried out the Minecraft dimension. And it sucked. I don't know why they didn't like specifically code it so their own dimension was cool, but nope, it was so boring. It had endermen, so if we needed more enderpearls, we could always come here. But for now, I just liked that the portal looked black and spooky, so it added some atmosphere to the portal hallway. Hoping to get back on our good luck streak with dimensions, I decided to beg for iron in the book <laughs> before throwing it into the portal. When I got into the portal, I saw something even better than iron. An entire world full of diamond blocks. We already had a dimension before with just a sea of diamond blocks, but now we have an entire world of diamond. I collected a bunch of those before heading home. The next dimension I named after something that literally anybody who's used a calculator before would understand. It was crazy. Insane lighting, thousands of cloud particles all over, but no special blocks I needed or anything besides jack-o'-lanterns. But I only needed those to decorate the portal with, so I just grabbed a few before heading back. On day 53, I headed into another dimension named after a bunch of numbers. Of course, it was another one of the ones that was constantly playing an annoying noise over and over and over and over. The lighting in here was also so weird. I decided to grab just some blocks to decorate the portal with and head home. But that's when I noticed something. A single chest floating alone in the void. What could be in the chest? Diamonds, gold, netherite? I had to find out. I bridged my way over the void extremely dangerously. And while I was doing that, I realized there was a lot more chests out there. Not just the one I had my eye on. Once I finally got to the chest, it was just the starting loot again. I risked my life for some raw salmon and a wooden pickaxe. On day 54, I created a new dimension that I named Star. This one was actually really cool. It had green star particles everywhere and had a really cool blue sky. Okay, I know the sky is normally blue, but like this is a cooler blue. I learned from my previous mistakes and after bridging over to one of the islands, I tried playing placing down my water first before just trying to MLG down. And good thing I did, cause water does not work in here. So I just jumped down without water anyway. And it was an island full of stripped oak locks, which is perfect since that was a big part of what we were building the portal hallway out of. So I grabbed a bunch of those and headed home. On day 55, I made a dimension called map for some reason, and I went in. Everything looked all nice and good and normal until I tried to break one of the chiseled stones that was there and a silverfish popped out. And I quickly realized the entire world was infested with silverfish. If I stayed in there any longer, the floor would be broken out from under me as I was being attacked. So I rushed back to the portal to get to safety. On day 56, I wanted to level up my gear a bit. So I took my enchanting setup and moved it into our XP dimension. After mining some quartz for a while, I used the levels to enchant a few diamond swords, combining them to get the perfect sword. We still had many to put on it, but we'd get that later. And to top it all off, I upgraded the sword to netherite. On day 57, I put the new looting sword to work and killed some of our chickens, cows, and squid to gather materials for more bucking quills, since we needed them for new dimensions. And to end off the day, I went to two more dimensions, neither of which had anything notable other than that one of them was one layer thick of concrete and then the void under it, which was kind of scary. The dimension I went to on day 85 though, I named Library, and inside was a giant, infinite library. But these bookshelves weren't normal bookshelves. I broke one and picked it up, and it was called a Box of Infinite Bookshelves. I realized when you right click these, a book pops out, just full of random text. I think it'd be a good idea to see what dimensions these books lead to. So on the next day, I did just that. In this dimension, it looked like a normal Minecraft world, but tinted red. This world was also infested with silverfish, and since there were no new blocks we needed here, it was just like a normal world, I left that place ASAP. On day 60, I decided to try one more book from the infinite bookshelves to see if it would get us anything good. This dimension was definitely more unique than the last one. Being a fully colored floating island mesa, it definitely looked pretty cool, but it was infested with mobs. 
so it was time to head out. For the next couple days, I felt like we needed a break from making new dimensions and needed to upgrade our gear and our base. So I started with making an area under the portal hallway look a bit nicer and turned it into a little fenced area and moved our cows over there since their old pen was in the way of where the portal hallway would be expanding. Then I stopped by the village and shuffled one of the villagers trades until we got to sell us some bending bugs. I grabbed a few of those and headed into our XP dimension. Some pieces of our gear were currently netherite so I put mending on those first. Then I mined quartz for so many levels and enchanted an axe. Got efficiency four, unbreaking three, and silk touch. I enchanted a diamond pickaxe and got efficiency four and unbreaking three. Then I enchanted our netherite boots and put mending on those. I wasn't quite done yet though. I mined some more quartz and enchanted a few books and a diamond shovel. We got a pretty good enchantment on it, so I took it back to the overworld to turn it into netherite and put one of our new efficiency books on it to make it efficiency five. To celebrate our newly leveled up gear, I went and massacred all of our chickens except for two and moved those behind the portal hallway near our cows. I also got like nine chickens from nine eggs, so that was pretty cool. On day 63, we were back into the search of a dimension for more netherite. We've technically found one, but it was ancient debris, and it was so sparse we still don't have enough to make full netherite gear. We went through a few dimensions today, and while they did have cool terrain, there was nothing too special about them. So we just gathered the blocks to decorate the portal and left pretty quickly. The third and final dimension we went to this day though, happened to have end ships again, which we've seen, but this time I got an idea. In the end ship chest, there's always a book, and I never thought to try throwing that book in a portal and see what the dimension is like. So after a day of gathering obsidian, cause I was completely out again, these portals take a lot of obsidian Okay, I don't know what to tell you. I finally got around to seeing what dimension the end ship book would create, and this is it. The main thing we gathered from this dimension was sponge. I didn't really have a use for it in mind, but if we decided to spend our remaining 35 days draining the ocean monument, now we can. After this dimension though, our luck definitely changed for the better. I created a dimension from a book with the red written in it. And through this portal might be the best dimension we've found yet. Here we found a dimension made up almost entirely of ancient debris. With this, we can fully upgrade our gear to netherite. But even still, it might seem hard to believe, but this isn't even the craziest dimension we end up finding. But we'll get to that later. In a huge stroke of luck, the next dimension I tried, also named after a color, green this time, was even better than what we just saw. An entire dimension full of netherite blocks. Finally, we'd be able to fully upgrade all of our gear. On day 67, I expanded the portal hallway a bit to make room for our next portal. I called this dimension Zones, and when I headed inside, Whoa, 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 whoa. I was immediately blinded, poisoned, and I couldn't place blocks. I was so close to death, but once the blindness wore off for a bit, I was able to see that this world was the exact same as our world, with the village and everything. But this world was toxic and corrupt. There was nothing here I needed, and I really didn't want to die, and this world was scaring me. So I went back to our own. On day 68, I discovered a dimension with an unreasonable amount of zombie villagers and even more emerald blocks. If I ever get over the trauma of what happened to our last villager, rest in peace, maybe we'll use this dimension to set up a new villager trading hall. At this point, our portal hallway is almost filled up. We only had a few more slots for portals before we finished the build. So over the next few days, I speed ran new dimensions to fill up the missing slots. The first one was tunnels, which was a dimension full of infinitely repeating tunnels, go figure, made entirely of sea lanterns. The next dimension was, this is a very long phrase that hopefully is not in any dictionary. And this dimension turned out to just be a void world, Next, I created a dimension called Terminal, which looks just like another void world until you realize it's actually a world full of black concrete. After that, I created a sponge dimension, and this almost ended our hardcore world. Right next to where the portal spawned was a one block hole all the way down to the void that I nearly fell in. Luckily, I was able to avoid it and live another day. I made a dimension called Slime after that, which obviously was just full of slime blocks, but this next dimension is where things got interesting again. I created a dimension named Skygrid, and inside was, a sky grid. This dimension was risky. One wrong move and I fall all the way down to the void and lose our world. But not only did this place have literally every single block, including command blocks, structure blocks, and even spawners, but even had some exclusive blocks we'd never seen before. First, we grabbed this block that looked like lime and black flashing concrete, and it was called cursor for some reason. I also saw another right stair in this dimension, 
So of course I had to go get it. When I picked it up, I realized it had a very fitting name of swaggiest stairs ever. And I have to admit, I fully agree with that. Before we leave this place though, I grabbed one of the shulker boxes that was here and I bounced. It had been a while since we upgraded our gear. So on day 72, I brought our netherite blocks and went back to our XP dimension. There, I got a silk touch book and added it to our pickaxe. I upgraded it to netherite and bought another mending book from our villager to fully max out this pickaxe and even granted some more XP to repair it all the way. Our gear is nearly fully maxed out now. On day 73, I just did a little building to make the portal hallway look a bit nicer. With the hallway full of portals now, I decided to get rid of some of the dimensions that were bad that we'd never go to again and replace them with new dimensions that could be good. First, I created a dimension called Shapes. And inside was random floating shapes made of different colored glass, wool, carpet, concrete, everything like that. This was perfect because we'd need all these colored blocks to build and decorate the portal hallway. So I spent the rest of the day gathering up some concrete. And with that, I started on actually building the building that would be the portal hallway. Since we had access to full on netherite blocks, I wanted to use them in the build so it would look pretty rich. So I spent most of the day gathering those and then started on the actual building. Then I spent the next 15 whole days working on building the hallway. I used netherite blocks for these big pillars and dead coral, stone, and andesite for most of the walls. The main centerpiece of the hallway are these three huge stained glass windows and decorative portals I hung on the wall. It took forever to build, but I think it turned out pretty great. With less than 10 days left before we hit day 100 and fight the Ender Dragon, there were still a few things left on our to-do list. Finish maxing out our gear, collect any last minute OP items like golden apples, and get the eyes of Ender we would need to actually get to the end. In the interest of finding any last minute OP gear, I headed into a new dimension I named One and immediately we were off to a scary start. Not only did this place look scary with its color scheme and lighting, but a Ravager spawned and came right at me. And I quickly learned too, when you take damage in this dimension, you also get blinded. Then I see arrows being shot at me and I hear pillagers coming. I ran away and blocked myself up to eat. I couldn't even run any further because the entire world was on fire. I pillared up and was luckily able to bridge back to our portal safely. After that near-death experience, I decided it was finally time to finish maxing out our gear with Protection 4, Unbreaking 3, and Mending. So that's what I did. Midway through the process of disenchanting and re-enchanting to get the perfect enchants, I realized rather than wasting all this quartz I'm getting, it would look really good in the portal hallway. So I went back to switch out the stripped oak logs for quartz pillars. While I was doing that though, I got attacked by a literal horde of zombies that just came out of nowhere. Luckily, I never got close to death from this, but it was weird. Like, where do they come from? Why did this happen? I don't even know. After that night ended, I finished adding in the quartz and it was definitely an upgrade. Then I got back to the XP dimension and finished maxing out all of my armor and even my axe. Then I mined some extra quartz for XP to mend up any of our damaged gear and finished up for the day. On day 59, we got back to dimension hopping to get any last minute OP gear before going to the end. We already tried dimension 1, so now we're trying dimension 2. It looked insane, with so many new and unique colors, and even a new biome we hadn't seen yet, the Mega Taiga. No special loot though, and nothing we really needed, so next dimension to try was 3. This dimension's terrain we'd already seen a bunch of times before, and with just a few blocks we didn't really need, dimension 4 was next. This was just another dimension with about a billion end ships, so there wasn't much for us to check out here. Dimension 5 though, was where things got interesting. This dimension had us surrounded by mine shafts, and for the first time, the chests that spawned weren't starter loot chests, but these were actual mine shaft chests. The first one I opened even had an enchanted golden apple. This is perfect. Before leaving, I opened up a few more and they each had pretty decent loot. Dimension 6 also had a bunch of chests stacked in pillars, but these are just starter chests again, so nothing too special. On day 97 though, we found exactly what we had been looking for. 
At first, this dimension looked like a flop, just full of nothing I needed, but as I was looking around before leaving, I noticed something in the distance. We had seen fleets of end ships before, but this time, I saw one all on its own, and it was accompanied by an end city. We had never seen an end city before, so I figured this end ship must have actual loot inside it, which meant an elytra. I headed straight towards it and even made an arrow on the ground to point my way back home that I'd be able to see when flying through the air. It looked like mobs weren't able to spawn anywhere else in this dimension, except for the shulkers inside the end city, so this meant the city had hundreds of shulkers inside it which made it very dangerous. I slowly but surely made my way through the city. Luckily, we had just upgraded our armor to all prop four, so I was able to take quite a few hits. All of these shulkers also meant we were picking up so many shulker shells for shulker boxes. I used the levitation effect and floated my way all the way up to the top and found a couple of chests. Inside the chest wasn't any loot that we needed, but this was real end city loot, which meant that the end ship we saw had to be real too. I made my way up and used an ender pearl to teleport to the end ship. And inside the ship, we finally got an elytra. This is now everything we needed to have the perfect Ender Dragon fight. Once we got home, we bought another mending book, so we know they wouldn't break. And then I also crafted up some fireworks. Then, for the final time, we built a portal, but this time with no special dimension. We headed into the nether to get blaze rods, which is pretty quick with our elytra. We found the nether fortress and killed a bunch of blades with our looting three sword. On day 99, we flew out of the nether and threw our first Eye of Ender to find the stronghold. And after flying around for just a little bit, we found it exposed in the ocean. And finally, on day 100, we filled the portal to the end and jumped inside to fight the dragon. Yes! And with that, after 100 days with infinite dimensions, we finally beat the last dimension, the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe to win 